Is it cheating to use AI-generated images for your art? Today I'll share my opinion as a full-time artist with experience in digital art, traditional art, and graphic design. First, let's break down how artists use AI for art, because the process varies. A common misconception in the art community is that artists who use AI simply enter a prompt, click a download button to get a finished piece of art, then pass it off as a handmade painting. I don't doubt that is happening, but that doesn't fully represent how AI is being used. Many artists put a lot of work into generating an image. It may take several rounds of text prompts to get a satisfactory result. And even then, you need to spend considerable time cleaning up the image in another application like Photoshop. This process may take days, weeks, or months, and the end results might be significantly different enough to where it is hardly recognizable as the original generated image. Other artists may simply use AI images to conceptualize new ideas or to act as reference. In this case, the end result is handmade artwork that is based on the reference, but is not an exact duplicate. It may even include additional details, which make the scene completely unique from the original generated image. Let us also differentiate between artists who will be using generated images commercially and those who will do so non-commercially. Some artists might want to sell images they generate. Others might want to enter them into competitions among non-generated art, and some may simply want to share images online for fun. When we think about making art, we often envision the physical process. Is it cheating to produce art without the physical act of drawing or painting? Clearly the same physical process is not happening when you generate an image, as opposed to illustrating it by hand, but there is still a creative process. I think what it comes down to is honestly representing your art. AI is not dishonest about how it makes an image. It turns visual information into art using an algorithm. Humans, on the other hand, have to use a combination of physical input, hardware, and software to make art. If humans are not doing the physical labor to produce AI-generated art, how much credit can they take? I'd say that varies. How much credit does Walt Disney get, despite countless unnamed laborers being the ones to draw and paint the majority of the frames in his animations? I myself have done lots of work for hire, where I have agreed to draw something that was someone else's idea, and I get no credit for it, nor am I entitled to it under those circumstances. In other cases, I have sold the rights to images I did create. I no longer get credit for those images either. In many cases, I think some share of the credit is due to those who generated the idea, and some to those who executed it. If you generate an image and use it as is, then you can only take credit for the idea since it was your prompt and you selected the final output. You cannot say you physically rendered the image by hand. There will most certainly be instances where artists generate art but do not mention how it was made, or they may go as far as to lie and say they created it by hand. Artists already use a variety of traditional and digital techniques to reproduce art and pass it off as their own, either to make money or get recognition. The only thing standing in the way of artist imposters is education and awareness in the art community. It's really up to other people to identify dishonest art and report it. So the potential for artists to sell or get recognition for AI-generated images is definitely there. But is it a threat to artists who create their own work by hand? Even if you wanted to try to directly sell AI-generated images as your primary form of creative output, you would be facing some major obstacles. First, there are almost always flaws in the generated images that you need to have the experience to see and the skills to correct. Otherwise, it will be obvious to anyone that your image is not genuine. For example, a misshapen eye or a horizon that is not straight. There is a standard for what is passable as art. Just because it looks realistic doesn't mean it looks correct. Second, there will always be inconsistency in your style, because you don't have one. The images you generate will vary between many styles, which will give away the fact that you're not producing these images without some help. Third, other artists will have access to the same styles you use, so how would you stand out against thousands of other people generating similar images? How will you protect the commercial viability of a style that is not yours when anyone else can generate images with that same style? Fourth, the images you generate will not always be exactly what you want. Let's say you get a commission to create an image. You're going to be limited by the output of the AI, and you may not ever be able to deliver something that satisfies your client. 
If your clients or fans catch wind of you generating images, they might value your work less knowing less effort went into making it. They may even decide to just generate the images themselves rather than pay you to do it. Another consideration is what you will say when someone asks about the meaning or story of your artwork. You could make something up, which a lot of traditional artists do, but without genuine answers, your art will be purposeless and arbitrary. How about if they ask you about your artistic process, or they want to see your studio, or know which tools you use? Are patrons going to be impressed by your laptop and keyboard skills? Probably not as much as if you sit down and start creating something by hand. I've said it before, art does not sell simply because it exists. There are countless examples of amazing artwork by talented artists that do not sell. Likewise, there is also a lot of generated art that also will not sell. If anything, the ease at which images can be generated will only create more competition and oversaturation in that space relative to other art production methods. Or in other words, the harder it is to learn a technique, the fewer people you have to compete with. So if you're a traditional artist or a digital artist, you have nothing to fear. There will always be a niche for your work. That's not to mention that being successful as an artist takes more than just output. You need a lot of other skills to get recognized and keep people interested in your work. All image generators have terms defining how you can use the images generated through their service. Most allow commercial use of the images that are generated, but they may also specify that you do not own the rights to that image because other users may get the same result. So if you do generate something interesting, you better hope another artist didn't beat you to utilizing it. You might also find yourself being accused of copying another artist because they already generated that image. Many image generators describe their output as being public domain or creative commons, so would that mean if you tried to sell your generated images, they would be worthless? At the very least, Creative Commons opens you up to other artists potentially reusing your work commercially without repercussions. And while many image generators offer a free version, if you use their service enough, you will eventually have to pay a fee. Dolly, for example, has you purchase credits for about 10 cents each. Well worth the money considering the cost of stock imagery, but still it may eat into your profits to have to pay to get ideas that you could be coming up with using your imagination for free. Some image generators may even charge you a fee based on the size of your business. Basically, the more successful you are using image generators, the more of a share of your profits they are going to get one way or another. Ultimately, you are paying for a service that anyone can get the same results from, so the only one guaranteed to make money here are the software companies. To get to the point, it will be difficult to rely heavily on image generation and have a successful and profitable career as an artist, unless you're already well established. I would say in many respects, it will be harder than making a living as a traditional or digital artist. Now to address the concern that generated images will have an unfair advantage in art competitions. First, let me say that generated art should only be competing against other generated art. It should have its own category, just like we don't lump photography in with oil painting and sculpture. We also shouldn't conflate AI-generated art with digital art, even if it's in a digital style. The process of creating digital art is vastly different from generating an image. To be fair, all of this is new, and I don't blame judges for being unaware of new technologies. It wasn't until fairly recently that digital art was even given a proper place in art competitions. I think what would be fair to everyone is to embed metadata into a generated image so that it cannot be misrepresented. Similar technologies are currently being used by Photoshop to track how an image was manipulated, so I think the risk of human artists taking full credit for AI-generated images is short-term. Even now, it may violate an image generator's terms of service to attempt to pass off AI-generated art as entirely human-made. If you are generating images and using them as is, then you are obligated to let people know how those images were created, especially so if you're planning on submitting generated art into a competition. How about using AI-generated images strictly as a reference? Would that be considered cheating? Would it violate terms of use if you referred to a painting inspired by a generated image as a painting? First, let's tackle cheating. Is it cheating to make art from a reference photo rather than draw something from observation or imagination? Some artists might say yes, but it's a very common practice. Personally, I view my relationship with generated images not as a means to create finished artwork, but as a reference to inspire something else. 
There's no point in copying a reference exactly, so many artists use it loosely. Prior to image generation, artists had to rely on several methods of acquiring reference images. First, they could capture reference images themselves, but that requires photography skills, and the subjects one can capture are limited by a variety of factors. Second, artists could acquire reference images to use legally through stock agencies, creative commons, or the public domain. Whether intentional or not, this is sort of taking advantage of the fact that these images are already well composed. And finally, many artists would simply violate the copyright of other artists and just use whatever they found on the internet. Now that an artist can generate an image that no one has the rights to, that is a win-win situation for everyone. Reference images becoming more accessible makes art more accessible to artists, from illustrators to graphic designers to sculptors. Artists can freely make art from images, and it doesn't affect anyone else's work. That is with the exception of styles that can be applied to generated images, but I talk about that in another video. If you feel that generating an image is too easy and you prefer to scour the internet and ultimately settle for an image that is less than ideal, go for it. But it doesn't mean artists who want a more efficient method are cheating. In my opinion, the only cheating going on is artists cheating other artists by using their work without permission. In regards to certain companies' terms of use, I think that the fair use doctrine should apply equally to generated images as it does real images. As long as you substantially alter a reference, it should be acceptable to use in your art. Just like you cannot download a reference image and then immediately re-upload it for sale elsewhere, you shouldn't do that with generated images either. Otherwise, if you made a painting from a generated image, it is a painting. Just like you wouldn't call a painting a photo, even if that is what it was based upon. As far as giving credit for a reference image you used, that's really up to you. When you visit an art gallery, is each painting accompanied by a list of references? No. But obviously many artists use them. If you substantially changed an image when painting it, there may be no need to give credit. Your variation is its own idea. The AI did not have the capacity to elaborate or refine the idea into a finished product through its own initiative. It created an intermediate step, but it did not complete the task. You commissioned the AI to produce some concepts, but ultimately you used your judgment to select the best reference and then executed the final result by hand. And it's not inconceivable that you could have come up with a nearly identical image had you taken the time to piece together the references yourself. Therefore, I don't think it would be fair to put too much emphasis on the AI's role in your creative process and say, I made this painting with AI. That would be dishonest because people would believe your painting was entirely generated, which it wasn't. You were the one who performed the vast majority of the work. There's also the consideration of distributing artwork after it has been created. It's all fine and dandy that you can generate images, but they aren't going to sell themselves. The artist is the one carrying the burden of trying to monetize the artwork. You want to honestly represent your art, so I think a mention of AI could be appropriate, but I wouldn't give it so much credit that you severely diminish your role in the process. I have illustrated and designed an entire book as a work for hire. Literally half of the pages are my drawings, but I only get credit as the illustrator, not for the entire book. And wouldn't the cover look odd if I shared my credit with Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and InDesign? The people reading that book could care less about my role and how I made the artwork. They are only interested in the product. You may have the guilt that without AI, you couldn't have made that artwork. But the same can be said about your paints, canvas, desk, the electricity you use, and everything else that facilitates your creativity. You rely a lot on tools to make art. And without them, you would have nothing to show for yourself. But these are just tools, not people. Typically, credit is reserved for people. To debate about giving credit to AI bestows it with an anthropomorphic quality. It opens the doors to the question of whether AI should have rights like humans do. The aspect of generating images that I am having the most difficulty reconciling is who gets credit for the idea when something unique is created. If AI generated the art, an artist chose the prompt and selected the final result, and the sources of the image came from other humans, then who created the art? If I'm the first person to have the idea to make a donut-shaped bus, but AI is the way the image was visualized or designed, and the image is assembled from photographs other people took, is it even my idea? 
Even if I redraw the idea or rework it entirely, subconsciously that generated image is still influenced my output. Could I honestly say I created that image with no more than my own imagination? No. How about if I used a few traditional reference photos of donuts and buses instead? Would that substantially affect the image I output? I couldn't say I painted it from imagination, because I'd be relying on those source images for most of the composition and detail. If I drew a real bus and donut from observation, that would also not be purely from imagination. I'd be interpreting reality and translating it into artwork. If I drew a donut and bus purely from memory, that's all input I received throughout life. Even if I draw an object or creature that has never existed on Earth, it's still based on the input I have received from my experiences here. I can't draw anything purely from my imagination, because visualizing something that does not exist is impossible. Draw the fourth dimension. You can't. The only way to create an original or unique idea is to utilize forms, color, physics, and other properties that are not present in our reality. For example, many insects can see ultraviolet light, but we cannot. There are many more colors in the spectrum of light that are not visible to us beyond our rainbow. AI could create and see four-dimensional art in ultraviolet. We cannot. Although we may never be able to comprehend them, that doesn't change the fact that these extra-dimensional properties exist. Therefore, the only things that AI can generate and that we can perceive are things that already exist in our reality. Perhaps an individual has not generated or illustrated an image of it yet, but it does exist in concept. Furthermore, if the elements of the donut-shaped bus were already present in the generator's database and just had to be coaxed out, then in a sense, all ideas can exist without human origins. And the only constraint on what can be generated are time, the database of resource images, and human input. The success of AI's intelligence demonstrates that fundamentally everything is random noise that is capable of being assembled or may even self-assemble into a structure that sentient beings like humans interpret as reality. Even with the limited understanding of reality we have given it, AI can create an almost infinite variety of images, even iterations of the same image, but it's not doing anything a human cannot do. Whether you are human or AI, when you have an idea, you are just assembling pieces of reality. If any of us imagined a donut-shaped bus, the iterations would be as random and numerous as what is generated by AI. But the results would be constrained by our reality of what a bus and donut are and how they could combine in a logical, contextual, and recognizable way. Few of us have skills to translate that from a mental image to artwork, but that doesn't mean the concept isn't there for anyone to pull from at any time. Is it cheating to skip the step of piecing together an idea from imagination, reference photos, or real-life study and go right to painting? Art is subjective, so there is no right or wrong way to make it. Many artists have the skills to make art, but lack inspiration. And not all artists enjoy sourcing reference images. They would rather be painting. If you feel like you're cheating yourself, then perhaps generated images are not for you. But I don't think there is any harm in using AI to generate ideas, because ultimately, you really aren't creating ideas so much as just taking inspiration from what is already there. If you can describe a concept well enough for AI to piece it together in a convincing way, then you really didn't come up with anything other than a vague sentence of words. If you give those same words to a human and ask them to make art out of it, they will undoubtedly draw from the same visual information AI would, and their output would be just as random. If you had a limitless number of humans drawing limitless iterations of that art, you would end up with a database of images similar to what AI is outputting. So all an image generator is doing is potentially saving you time. It's like hiring a studio of artists to draw concepts for you with the understanding that it's your initiative and you'll get the credit. But ironically, it may be time that holds AI-generated images back the most. Suppose there are infinite ways to draw a donut-shaped bus, but only one really aligns with the vision I have of it in my mind. I could spend time and money generating 20,000 images over the course of years and still not find the one I want. It might just be easier in the end to create the image myself or hire someone to make it using traditional methods rather than randomly roll the dice hoping to land on the image I want. So although I am somewhat uncomfortable with the notion of someone or something else influencing my ideas, that's just my ego. 
I don't really have any unique ideas, and I never will. The only unique thing about me is the way I interpret my own reality, and then express that to others. That's going to take the most adjusting to if I want to feel comfortable using AI to inspire artwork. I think I prefer that over competing with everyone else to claim the rights to something that already exists or is a derivative of pre-existing work. I don't believe AI can take credit for the ideas it generates any more than a human can. Ideas that are attributed to individuals likely have been envisioned by millions of others over the course of history. Everything already exists in the form of concepts, and when we have an idea, we're simply transferring it into a tangible form we can experience with our senses. Therefore, I don't believe anyone or anything inherently owns the rights to a generated idea. It belongs to everyone. And last but not least, let's address using AI-generated images non-commercially. If you're making a living as an artist, I understand feeling threatened by other artists using AI. But you aren't just competing against other artists any longer, you are competing against anyone with a smartphone or a computer. I believe the vast majority of people who will generate images will not be artists or have the intention of pursuing art as a career. These folks will lack judgment when selecting images for commercial use. It takes an artistic eye to know a good image from a bad one. Sure, there will be loads of images on the internet that look like real art, but it will be obvious that these are just people sharing images that they find funny or interesting. For instance, anyone with a smartphone can take photos, but few of us are actively trying to sell them. We see images every day that are just images, not photography for the sake of artistic expression. I think, or at least I hope, that the general public will develop an eye for what is genuine and what is not, and overall the world will become more skeptical of media. I highly doubt a glut of generated art being shared on the internet is going to be what holds back artists who use traditional methods. If anything, it is an opportunity to distinguish yourself as a hands-on artist. Put more emphasis on showing your patrons your creative process. The emotional bond between artists and their community is stronger than the virality of images. People who appreciate handmade art may be a separate demographic from people who enjoy AI art, but there is always going to be some crossover, so the best strategy would be to be open-minded to the benefits of both. So is using AI to make art cheating? If you're being dishonest about the origins of your work, then yes. If not, then I don't see any issue with it. That's all for this video. If you're interested in learning more about AI art, check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.